what's up, guys? Welcome to Game Changer. Good I'm David Good morning. Morning. What's up, guys? How y'all doing today? You guys ready for a great Tuesday? Absolutely. That's right. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Well, good start to the series. What do you think? Pace the race. I think we uh, I think we got off to a good, even pace. What do y'all think? <laughs> what do you think? Twenty percent into the series, are we pacing well? Are we tracking? All right, that's a good thing. Are we tracking? Here's my question. Are you tracking? Are you tracking? You know, we use that term a lot here in our sales. You know, we, um, we're sitting down with somebody and they say, well, I want to sell this much this month, or this is where I want to be this year. You know, this is, this is, this is the week I want to have. Or, hey, I want to hit X amount of presentations or demos this week and then we're asked the question getting into the second day we'll say hey are you tracking or where are you tracking so are you tracking is kind of a question sometimes I think you know to make us to kind of just put us into a place where we actually recognize the you know just focus on and pay attention to the fact that maybe we are or are not but the better question and that's and that's good and I get that it kind of just puts puts us into the, the reality. Wait a second, I'm not tracking. But the reality is when you say, are you tracking? And you ask that question, it requires an answer. It requires thought. And I just, you know, there's many times when I've been on this race and this journey of life and I've assessed the situation and I've said, you know, what? I'm not tracking. And um, that's not a good feeling. You know, um, yesterday I was part of some of the one-on-ones, and it's interesting that you said that, is that you, you know, I'm not tracking. I think one of the things to know that is I think you have to regularly be, you know, be in a position where you're analyzing. You know, I think sometimes in the, you know, in, in a business world, you know, you, what, whatever, whatever, you know, field you're in, I think sometimes we can leave our day feeling mm-hmm. defeated versus accomplished. And I think it accomplished. And it's, I think it starts with how do you pace yourself? I think you first have to, you know, begin your day. It sounds trivial, but begin your day with very specific goals that you want to hit, e- hit easy, manageable goals. Like today, whatever that is personally or business, you know, today I'm, you know, I'm going to do 15 push-ups every hour, or I'm going to make sure I make healthy you know, choices, um, you know what, or, you know, if someone speaks negative to me, I'm going to immediately shut it down and, and move on and think positive thoughts, whatever it is that you're needing, right? So, you know, when you start your day, you know what you're needing to make it through or pace your race for the day. So I think it's, you know, it starts with setting sp- very specific goals. And you know what? The, the truth of the matter is we start out our day and we don't always hit all of them, right? But I think we need to be able to go back at the end of the day and go, what did I accomplish? What did I uh, you know, what what did I do? You know what? Today I I didn't eat candy. I didn't. I ate carrots. I don't know. Um, I you know a couple times I was going to be pulled into a water cooler conversation, and when I seen it head in that direction, I exited because obviously positive thoughts are what you want to do to keep going. So you you find ways, whatever that is, and go back and and um, examine your day so that you can. Find the losses where you didn't hit your markers or what goals you set, but also make sure that you are acknowledging and celebrating what you did hit so that you leave your day feeling accomplished, even if you didn't hit all your goals, when you're able to go back through and go, hey, I did this, I did this, I did this, even though you could either end your day defeated because of everything you didn't get done, or you could celebrate what was accomplished and end, you know, end your day feeling accomplished versus defeated. And I think it really has to do with, again, your mindset probably has a lot to do with your, your pace and, and, and how you, you know, get through your day. Yeah. Uh, Philippians two sixteen and 18 says, hold for- firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless, but I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice and I will share your joy. And, you know, it's, it's one of these things where, I mean, that's the ultimate, right, time frame where we're going to stand obviously before God and, and, and we don't want to run this race, obviously, or uh, in any way, shape or form in vain, but you know, breaking it down into our life, our course, right? The, the race that you're on here in this life, your, your destiny, your job, your career, you know, your, your financial track, 
your family, you know, um, you know, your, your health, whatever it is. And, you know, um, and it's all the above. It is, it's just so all important. The moment you, you know, it's kind of like an assembly line. If you, you know, if you take your focus, you have to focus on everything. You have to have all bases covered and, and you have to man every station, so to speak. Because if you, if you don't, you know, you take your eyes and you focus, you know, on this one area and you put all of your efforts into this area, but maybe you overstay your welcome, you know, then, then it's inevitable that some other area in your life will lack. So it's all the above. And it's not only waiting to get to the end. Obviously, that's the main race that we're speaking of life. But it's the race to to where you're headed this year. It's the race to the goal that you have in front of you. That, that you know of, of what God wants to accomplish in your life. And so, um, you know, let's not make that one in vain. And and I, and I love it that we t- take small steps. And that's what we're talking about really today. Um, you know, um, one step at a time. And you know, I was reading um, on this and um, in the. Uh, the uh, Bernice Alps of Switzerland, there's, there's the longest stairway in the world. And it's on, in, on the side of Mount Neeson. And it stretches three, 3.4 kilometers in length. Okay, six, that's 1,669 miles in altitude. And the stairway comprises of 11,647 steps. So this thing's 16 miles long. <clears throat> so once a year, this stairway is open for a race, like an annual race, and and, and the climbers, you know, they're out there and so forth. And every competitor that's ever done this says the only way to conquer this stairway is to take the first step. And so, you know, when God gives us a dream and a, a grand plan, some, something like that, that's equivalent to, I mean, I'm, I'm <clears throat> you know, if I can... I have to walk this thing, right? This is this is this is six, this is 1669 miles long. Think about this. This is this is this is a long process. This is a huge journey. And then, you know, when God gives us a dream, it's a grand plan. Sometimes we look at that and we're like, "Man, I can't I can't even I can't make this." So it paralyzes us from even taking the next step. <clears throat> and it seems impossible and sometimes I think that prevents us from even beginning. So, you know, I, I would say this is how Abraham felt. You know, looking at Abraham in the word of God, you know, he's, he has no children, right? He has no, no property to call his own. God gave him a promise that he would possess land and have, you know, many descendants. And Abraham was 75 years old at that time, you know. Think about this. And instead of being paralyzed by fear and uncertainty, Abraham took the first step. In Hebrews 11.8, it records this later on. It says that he obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. That's a very sobering scripture there. He obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. So God gave Abraham a grand plan. Not only did he give him a grand plan, he waited till he was old as dirt. I mean, like he gave him a grand plan. His wife was barren and he was old as dirt. And, and he said, not only did he say, hey, you're going to have a kid, you're going to be the father to everything. I'm going to make you the father to many nations. And I'm going to give you a man who owns no land. I'm going to give you everywhere that you put your foot. And so precisely because Abraham's faith and actions worked together, he saw God do miracles in his life because how many know that it takes major faith to believe for that miracle when you're that old, you have no land, and your wife is barren? I mean, and so I just, I just looking at that, I think he felt that way. You know, what, what if God gives you the dream and says, okay, you know, Joe, this is where, this is where I'm going to put you. This is what you're going to accomplish. This is what you can do. This is what I'm opening up and, and, and placing, you know, in your life. And then all of a sudden you immediately hear this promise. It excites you. Of course, it would be wonderful. But then all of a sudden you begin to look at all, you're encumbered by the facts. You begin to look at all the circumstances around you. And then you, every, every one of the circumstances point to why you can't do it, why it can't happen, and why, why it doesn't make sense. And, and now you're faced with, what do I do? I think that's a really, um, it's a good place to be in, but it's one of those times when you get to that place that you also have to really rely on the Lord to lead you. Because I think in those seasons, you have the opportunity to take the next step, the right step, or you know, a step that's going to maybe take you on a detour. And I say detour because sometimes we take detours in life. God has a plan and, and it's not a, it's, although there's scripture, the scripture I just thought of was, you know, there's a way that seems right, but in the end it's destruction, right? So, but I think God's so good that even when we take a a step to the, 
left when we should have taken a little step to the right. He sometimes detours us, but if we, we allow him, even when we take those little detours, he gets us right back on track. It's interesting, before everything started, when um, um, there were these benches that we, these stools that we sit on, there's tape on the floor, and um, every morning I come in and the, and the leg of my stool is on the tape and every morning I go oh it's on the tape let me move it inside of it so I've been moving it to the right now for quite a while and yesterday as be close to me <laughs> yeah that's 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 true um but Ezra this yesterday when we got done he goes hey or maybe it was Matthias or both of them but one of them came up and said hey from now on make sure that the chair is on the tape. My point to that is there was a way that seemed right to me and the way was it needed to be to the right of the edge of the tape, not on the tape. And so Abraham was probably in the season where here God's given him this prom- promise and he's thinking, when is this ever going to happen? And he had the choice to stay and believe and trust or kind of try and make it happen for himself. Like go take his 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 chair leg off the tape and move it to the right a little bit or leave it where it needs to be and let God work it out. And guess what? He made a choice to keep going. And God, obviously, we know the story of Abraham. But, um, you know, I think that you have to be careful in those seasons that you do rely on the Lord because we all come to crossroads, right? And um, in those crossroads, we have to, you know, stay sensitive to the Lord and the people around, you know, the, the people that God puts in our, our life to kind of make sure that we're, we're taking the right path. Our, we're pacing ourselves down the right road and not the wrong one. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, um, faith without actions, the Bible says, is dead. Faith without actions is lifeless. So actions without faith are aimless. And so you have, you have two scenarios there. A lot of times we are so faith heavy, you know, and, and, and that's a good thing. But faith without action is lifeless. So if you have faith or you say you have faith, but there's no action that, that you know, that, that, uh, that follows then, you know, then I think that you've missed the point. And actions without faith are aimless, right? If we just are moving around like a chicken with their head cut off. And that's why God wants us to have both faith and actions operating in our lives. And, you know, that's what Abraham had. I mean, reality is he had faith, but at the same time, he didn't just believe God and sit. Sometimes you, we sit in those, if you, are, you have the tendency to, to, to act, Okay, then I think that sometimes you're you're maybe the best thing for you. I'm that person is to sometimes put, pull back and allow faith to kind of build up because you have no problem acting. And then maybe you're someone who has an issue with acting, but you believe God can do it. But you have an issue with acting. You have a you have an issue exercising that faith. And you know I think that in, in your in your case putting that first foot forward, taking a chance on God. And so both of them are important and God wants us to have both faith and actions operating in our life. And it's when they're both operating. It goes back to that factory mentality. If you can just think about this assembly line, if you, you know, um, if you focus on one area and, you know, you're going to have a bottleneck in another area, you know, if, if, if you, if you put all your manpower into one area, you know, then you're going to, then you're going to lack in other areas. And so that it takes a balance and, you know, God wants us to have both operate in our life and he's given us the power to both, listen to this, he's given us the power to both dream and do. And you need to get that. God's given us the power to both dream and do. We need to dream. And some of us have no problem dreaming. Some of us, man, are dreamers, right? I mean, some of us just, just, I mean, we, we, we have vision and we, we dream and we just think about it, but we're not doers, right? We're not, we haven't taken any action. We've just sat for so long on this promise and time is not waited for us. And, and I believe that God wants us to act as well. And then some of us are doers, but we haven't taken the time to really dream the dream or to plan the vision. And the Bible says without vision, people run wild. They perish, but another version says run wild or they become reckless. And it, and it's, and it's, and that means they perish. And so he's given us the power to dream and do. He's given us the power to imagine and to act. So we need to imagine creativity is important, but then putting that into action, you go, well, I haven't gotten it all down yet. I've erased, how many times have you erased the plan? How many times have you, how many times have you scratched through the, the blueprint? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge those of you that have scratched through the blueprint about 20 times. I'm going to challenge you to pick a hammer up and a nail. I'm going to challenge you to do something. 
Because I'm going to tell you that I believe sometimes we need to make some mistakes. Sometimes we just need to take the shot. And the enemy is the one behind you a lot of times when it's overdue. He's the one behind you saying, just a little longer. It's not quite done. You're not qualified yet. You're not ready. And the reality is, you're ready when God says you're ready. So faith without actions is lifeless. Amen? So he's given us the power to dream and do, imagine, and act. So here's my question. What are the first steps that we can take today, right, on our journey toward the grand plans? Not just big plans. Not just nice plans. But the grand plans that God has placed in our hearts. Because you and I both know that he authored them. He authored them. Many of us have no problem saying, man, God gave me that. God gave me this. God shared this with me. Hey, you know what God, God, God impressed upon my heart years ago? Hey, you know what God dropped in my spirit? Man, you know what God, God, I think God gave me this idea. But a lot of us don't see him as the finisher. And I think that's an issue. Well, if someone actually asked for an example of faith in action, I would say, um, you know, first you have to determine what you're, you know, having faith for. So let's just say maybe it's um, you want to start your own business. So I would say the action part would be um, connecting with people or finding books that help you. How do people start a business? What type of business plan? Putting together a business plan that what you want to accomplish. Okay, I'm going to need this, this, and th these three resources finances, product, and work, someone to help me, you know, a team member to help me, whatever those are. So I think you lay out a plan and then you begin working towards that. If you're having believing faith for maybe a reconciliation in a, in a relationship, and, and again, I mean reconciliation in a healthy relationship. There's some relationships out there that are toxic and unhealthy, but you're believing that, then you're going to, you can't change somebody, right? So I'm going to, my action is going to be, I'm going to allow the Lord to heal some of those hurts in me, and I'm going to set boundaries or I'm going to I'm going to sow seeds of love and encouragement, even when right now it's a season that I need to. So I think it's you have to first identify what you're having faith for, and then um, examine it and determine. Okay, this is what my I'm wanting my end result to be. What do I need to what what pit stops? You know, I'm, when we talked about pacing our race, like in, in, um, marathons, there, there are checkpoints that you stop in and you refuel. So what checkpoints do I have to have to get to where I'm going? Maybe you're in a financial issue, like learning, putting disciplines. Like if you're having a financial <coughs> issue and you're having, and believing God to help you through that, are you putting financial disciplines in line to allow Lord, the Lord to move? Like if you're, hey, God, I'm believing, I'm believing, but yet you're going and, you know, spending money frivolously, then you're not putting, you know, not just, you're not making faith and action work together. You're believing and then having bad action. So. Well, yeah. And something, something just to kind of piggyback. Hope that on, helps. Yeah. And I want to piggyback on that a little bit as well, because there's, there's two, we've been married 28 years. We've had a business. We started a business, you know, in reality, we started a business, this business in 2004, we had a s smaller, similar business that failed, um, you know, uh, f a few years before that. So it was the same type of business, but it failed miserably because of the, uh, the actions that um, we took and slash didn't take. And then we started officially the business that we own now in 2004, same, same name, same everything. So that's been, uh, what's, uh, 2004, but what, 20, that's how many years is that? 17 years. 17 years. Thank you. <laughs> Quick math. <laughs> so here, but here's the thing I would say, you know, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, I think it takes both sides. So I've made major mistakes. I'm just going on the business side of things. Um, I made major mistakes in all of it, but the business side of things, you know, we're, we're different. And, um, you know, you, you immediately said, make a plan. And I actually agree with that. Um, but you also have to have the, you have to have the, um, the take action. And so let me, let me just say this. I can tell you that when we look back at why some people ask this all the time, and there's not enough time to go over this in this podcast, but why, how you did this, why, how, why, how did you guys make it? I think that number one, you got to understand, you got to, let's just say business. Are you called to be a business owner? And I mean that sincerely. Are you called to be one? Because here's the thing, you know, business owner, it, you, can, you, know, you can be a business owner, not have to answer to anyone, which by the way, you always have to answer to someone. I'm not just talking about God, but you have customers and you have, you have bills and things of that nature. And if you're not called to be one, or if you're not committed, and if you're called, you get committed. And I'll explain that in a second. I'm just going to tell you that you can make a whole heck of a lot more money if you're an uncalled or uncommitted business owner, 
Now, I'm just hear me for a second. If you are, if you are an uncalled or an uncommitted business owner, and there's if's the operative word, you can make a whole heck of a lot more money working for someone else. Let me explain what I mean by that. If you're uncalled and uncommitted, then you're going to be unsuccessful. Because the reality is what got us and kept us going were, were the, the absolute stubbornness of getting back up when we failed. And people go, oh, it's glamorous. Let me just tell you something. There's a price to pay. And I don't know if I could do it again, like at 49. <laughs> In other words, I don't know that I would want to do it again. And I can tell you that there's... And there's thank God we both didn't question it at the same time. I mean, there were seasons, whether people understand it or not, that Dave was like, I'm just ready to give up. I'm like, no, we got this. We got this. Thank God we both didn't wake up on the same day saying... Like, hey, you ready to give up? Yeah, me too. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we out. <laughs> but but I want but I want to I want to stay there for one second, just because there's a if you're but if you are committed, because you're called, not to do something great, but to to do that, then the, I think the faith with actions thing is that you take action and you have faith, and and then the Lord helps you, and, and there's something here, you know, um, I, I'll say that as you take the first step, or steps you'll find a momentum of faith. And that's the key. As you, because if you're called, then you're committed. And what committed means is when you see the first bump in the road, the first issue come up of the day, the first challenge, the first obstacle, the first thing that didn't go your way, the first time that you can't make rent on your new business, you know, the, the, the times when you can't do those things, you don't, you don't question, okay, well, that was fun. Let me just jump right back into here because that's not committed. You get up, you take the first steps, you find momentum. You got to find it. And then a momentum, by the way, of faith, and it begins to build. And then the next step becomes apparent. And then it's just like anything else. I mean, and I cannot tell you today, even though we've, you know, we're a multi-million dollar organization, we, we, we're healthy, we're good, we've been in business for a long time. I can tell you that we still have to take certain things one step at a time. They're just a lot bigger steps. And it's so, but we've, we built that over the years. So I think that how do you take, how do faith and actions come together? You know, I think that if it's a God thing, right, he'll give you faith that will allow you to make the actions. You know, does that make sense? He'll give you the faith. In other words, if it's disjointed, it won't feel right. And possibly I'll say, because it's not right. And you can break that down, by the way, into, um, you know, m sales team and people here that aren't business owners, but they say, hey, I want to make this much money or I want to accomplish this. Well, how does your mor morning start? How, what are you going to do at 9.05, right, out of your, right after the meeting, right after the sales meeting, right after your, what's the first step you're going to do? Is it going to be indicative of what you said you wanted to accomplish? Or are you going to just do the same thing every day and expect a different outcome? Yesterday in some one-on-ones that I was in, it was interesting because we were talking about the race, and, and I walked into them. Um, the sales manager had, the, had paperwork um, that they certain topics that he wanted to hit with each person, and I didn't get those until as soon as he walked in and the person walked in. I kind of just skimmed over them, but um, one of the things that came to me in that in that um, in some of those conversations are when we're talking about a race, you never see a runner all of a sudden it's like they're it's like they're getting ready to start the race and they run on from the sidelines and then just get in their lane and run, right? What do they do? They st all of them start in the starting blocks and everyone's thought process in those starting blocks have to be different. You know, there's one person that may be thinking, man, I, I got this, I've trained for this. There might be someone else thinking, man, the person to my right, I've seen their speed in, you know, in the, in the test run and they were like, can I get them? You you know, whatever, but no matter what, they all crouch down, get in the starting blocks, get their mind focused on the lane in front of them mm. before it goes. And we forget that. We start our days like we're, we're running in the door trying to make it, you know, in our place on time, but we really haven't taken the time to sit down, breathe in, exhale, what am I going to accomplish today? And so we're starting just like if you're starting in a race where most people are already in the starting blocks, we're coming in off the mm -hmm. sidelines, getting in the lane and taking off, and there's no mental preparation before we get in it. Well, yeah, and, it's, and, it, and, and I know... And that never that, happens in a race, by the way. And I know way. we're out of, out of time, but can I say this? And Diana kind of touched on it at the very end. It starts even before the starting blocks. I mean, it starts in the training. It starts in the... before. And then here's the thing. If you haven't trained and you show up a game day, too late. You know, if you haven't trained, first of all, if I step out on the track in the Olympics to get into the starting blocks of anything, can I just tell you too late? 
if I here's the thing, I can get out there and I can go. Okay, I remember from high school. This is how you get in the starting blocks. This is what's supposed. And I can I can look that part kind of not really look that part, you know, until the camera gets on me. And then all of a sudden I'm down there too late. You know why? I didn't train. But can I tell you? Even if I did train, even if I did train and I did prepare and I spent months or years training for that moment, and even if I did get in the starting blocks, there's something in between. They come out and stretch. They come out and, and be prepared because you know what? If they trained. And then even if they know exactly what to do and they're fast and they're, and, they're, and they're athletes, if they don't stretch before, you could pull something. I mean, there's so many caveats. Running in your own race. I mean, I just thought of that too. If I'm going to be um, a relay racer, mm-hmm. I'm certainly not going to want to show up to the sprint race. Yeah. So I, we talked about that yesterday is, you know, don't measure your race based on someone else's because sometimes we might have same goals or same endpoint that we're wanting to achieve, but it might not happen in the same way for us as it does someone else. The most important part is that you show up, but that you run your race in your lane and not somebody else's. Mm, that's good. Yeah, and tomorrow what we're going to dive that's into. That's good comparison. That's right. That's exactly what I was hitting on your race. Yeah. Yeah, and matter of fact, I, I did, I, we weren't planning on this, but I'm throwing a, a little wrench into it because we're, we follow the Holy Spirit here. I want to I talk about staying in your lane tomorrow. We're talking about pacing the race, right? And part of pacing the race is staying in your lane and, um, and running your race. Let's talk about those two things you know, for the next couple of days. So stay in your lane, run your race. That's part of pacing your race, amen? And uh, so we're, we're going we're gonna to jump into that part tomorrow as we get into day three of Pace the Race. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, make sure you're here tomorrow at 8.30. Tell somebody about it. We love the dialogue, by the way. And Mike just uh, found out, man, on iTunes, um, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're trending really high in the religious section. And I uh, want to thank you guys for subscribing to that. If you haven't subscribed to the, um, I just want to say this, we normally don't do it, to Apple Podcasts, do us a favor, subscribe to that. And even if you watch us, um, because uh, we're, we're getting a lot of subscriptions and we're trending pretty high in the religious category. And... Uh, um, and so God's blessing that that avenue. Thank you. You know, we all want to celebrate at the end of a race, you know, the confetti and everything. But trust the process and uh, trust the process of getting there and celebrate the wins along the way. We forget that sometimes we beat up ourselves and we don't celebrate the wins along in our race. Amen. So. Thank you all for tuning in today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series so far. We still have a few days left of it. So if you guys are enjoying it, make sure that you guys continue to tune in over the next few days. Um, If you guys want, we actually had a comment come in this morning that they actually love the daily encouragement. But we have a daily encouragement text that goes out every single morning at 8.30. If you guys would like to opt into that, it is completely free. It doesn't cost a thing. You can text the letters EZGC to 813-522-3356. You can get a free text message every single morning, just a little pick me up, maybe before the podcast, maybe you can't tune into the podcast that morning. Just something that you can pick up or that can pick your morning up. Sorry got a text message and looked down. To everybody that watches us live, thank you so much for being with us every single morning. YouTube and Facebook, your comments mean the world to us. The engagement that you guys are talking with us throughout the show is awesome. We love it. If you guys happen to not be able to join us live, you can always catch us on the go. Like we just mentioned, Apple Podcasts, make sure you guys are subscribing. Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you guys listen to audio podcasts, you can subscribe to us on that platform. Or you can also catch the replay on YouTube every single day. We upload at 12 o'clock. If you are listening on any of those platforms or watching a replay, you can join us live every single morning at 8 30 a.m. EST on Facebook and YouTube live. Jump in, give us a comment, throw us a shout out, you know, make fun of the fact that I have a bald spot and I'm only 30, you know, whatever y'all want to do, have fun with it. But make sure you guys go check out Summer 21 drop on faithgear.co. It's a limited drop. We have a limited supply. Once we run out, it will take us at least three weeks to restock and we may not restock some of the items. So if you want it, grab it while you can. Our featured Bible plan of the week is Unfair Advantage. It's a four day reading plan on version or the Bible app. Go check it out, opt into it, read through it, let us know what you think about it. But thank you all for listening. We hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And on that note, we out. 